go. Yes, this is recording. Welcome everyone to our first impressions reaction video for Decadence, a very weird anime that we had lots of thoughts on. At least I had thoughts on. And today I'm joined by a friend who I forgot her exact name, and it is a Natalie Hunter. Uh, if you want to introduce yourself. Hi there, this is Natalie. Um, I've got a relatively new channel, mainly focusing on ReZero, along with some other stuff. And uh, we were on Twitter talking about decadence and decided to do the video together for this one. So, hi everyone. <laughs> yes, so go check out her channel if you like ReZero, which very popular show right now, so make sure you go watch her videos. So, since this is not a ReZero podcast, probably, what were your initial thoughts when you went into decadence? Like, what made you want to watch it? To be honest, the reason I watched it was because my boyfriend had already seen it and he was saying, you need to watch this. It's really weird. Okay. <laughs> Which is a really good way to get me to try something. He'd seen the first two episodes. And so the first one started and I'm sort of like, well, this seems pretty by the numbers. You know, there's, you, you know, the guy, he's digging up something and he's all like, oh, there's something strange about this world. And there's a little kid who's sort of, I wanted to go to the surface. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, is this kind of like Gurren Lagann type thing? You know, I, it seems so, so much leading you to think it was one certain thing. that I really didn't pay attention to that first scene properly until I went back and rewatched it after the shoe had dropped, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, we're going to be spoiling the first three episodes here. So if you haven't seen those, go watch those because it's really interesting. Yeah, and like did you start with episode one um, with any expectations, or was it just kind of, oh, this is a new anime, let's give it a look? And no, I was actually I started watching it for a similar reason to you. One of the anime discords I was in, someone mentioned saying it was really different, and I was kind of intrigued. When I first saw the summary and the thing, I was like, oh, cliche and reaction show, not really interested. But someone saying it was really different made me curious, because I was like, okay, how could that be something different? It was like a standard cliche action show. And then I saw that they were very right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I was kind of watching it with someone who'd already seen it, so I was knowing exactly when it was going to get weird. Okay. And for the first time, he wasn't telling me what the weirdness was. So I was kind of sitting there going, what is this like? They got like Attack on Titan equipment, they're fighting big monsters. The one question I really had at the start was, why is it called Decadence? I mean, like, it seems like for a mobile fortress, you'd be expecting it to be called, like, Destroyer, like the one in Konosuba or something. Yeah. Decadence sounds like not something that's out there, like, destroying these aliens. And so it's like, what does that name mean? Why is it called that? Is something really strange going to turn out to be the twist? And anything that I could have predicted wasn't right. But, right. Uh, but it didn't fit with that kind of very tropey action show kind of thing. Yeah, and that's one of the things I like, too, is that the twist was completely unexpected. Like, you know there's going to be twists, and it's like, okay, what sort of twists have I seen before? The bad guys are actually the good guys, or it's reverse, or something like that. But to mm. be, like, in a society ruled by, like, uh, cyborgs, and this being, like, a game world to them, maybe, sort of, though we don't exactly know what this is. Yeah, I mean, I think the way that it was brought in with the end credit scene um, after after the first episode, it really, if I hadn't already had two episodes available when I first watched it and I'd been stuck waiting a week to find out the second one, I would have been so confused. Like, I just watched this episode of something that seems like all these guys flying around shooting things and, you know, fighting these these big giant monsters. And then... There's this scene of these little chibi robot things going around on a spaceship and they're yeah. playing a game. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, because so it was good having the second episode available to explain what any of that was about straight away. And I watched the first two episodes kind of late at night. So my thought was, I watched the first episode and go to bed. And I saw that as well. I'm staying up. I need to watch the second one now. <laughs> and it was yeah, definitely worthwhile. I wait for the third one. But um, yeah, the second one without that. It, it would have seemed like a completely different show. And a few people I spoke to on Twitter actually didn't like the way the premise completely changed in episode two. 
and kind of wanted it to be the the tropey action show with the kind of Genki girl protagonist and everything that it seemed to be off the bat. And, uh, you know, one guy was saying to me that he feels that now he finds it harder to be invested in Natsumi because she's kind of uh, almost an NPC. But to me, it's kind of like, well, she's an NPC to the powers. These are the guys that fight the the monsters for yeah. the game. The same situation that we thought she was in in episode one, as far as she's concerned. So to me, it doesn't really change the premise from the protagonist's point of view. It's really more just kind of the way that we're seeing it is like the twist that you'd normally get in a show like Attack on Titan that you'd wait for for a long time to find out the world is not what the the people in it think it is comes in episode two instead of after a lot of time. Yeah, it's, it's interesting you bring up Attack on Titan because they definitely feel very similar. And what the people on Twitter are saying like they wished it was what it appeared to be at first, I can sort of appreciate that. I feel like we already have a lot of other shows with that general concept, and I would rather have something completely different than anything I've seen before. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I actually love the way that this has been done. I was expecting it to be, you know, a serviceable action show that uh, it was kind of drawing on some of those Attack on Titan themes with the with the big monsters and they're flying around shooting them, but I wasn't expecting it to have the depth that attack on titan has you know yeah. more of a kind of show actiony ripoff with some of the the action stuff of attack on titan but none of that kind of mysteriousness or or the depth of story and so that twist kind of made me think oh actually no this writer's doing something else this is cool yeah you and, know? and one of the things you mentioned earlier that i think is very interesting is how different the story is from everyone's perspective because, like, how Natsumi and Kabaguri uh, see the world is so different. Yeah, definitely. But um, this is what I was kind of saying to the, the guy that was saying he'd lost interest in Natsumi because of the twist. It's like, while we do, when we find out the perspective of the, uh, the powers, the, the little robot guys... It doesn't actually change the fact that Natsumi's story is still the same. She still wants to become a fighter, but she just doesn't know why she's different from from the what they think of the warrior races. Yeah, like why can't she be one of them? Yeah. It's also very interesting because it's like sort of is from the perspective of an NPC, but we don't know like is she like an AI who has like become fully aware? Is are all the other people that same type of AI? Or is she actually like some type of human still? Oh, see, I thought the humans were actually just humans. Um, there was a bit in, in episode three where they kind of gave a bit of a history of the, the planet. Yeah. And they um, own the Eurasia continent. And so I thought that the people living in decadence were, were just the last of humanity. But then there is that business with them having those uh, chips in them and yeah, so and being considered bugs. So it's so, like, is she an NPC with some kind of like, were they created or were they just the people that are living there who have been kind of involved in the the fantasy that these guys are playing out by going and playing this game? It's yeah, really strange. Yeah, and they don't like specify for sure if. Play, if that place is like real or if it's a computer simulation or something else even i think it's real i think i think it's still the earth okay. it's it's a futuristic earth that's what i think anyway it's kind of hard because those bits that explain everything are kind of from the perspective of the corporation you yeah know? so it's the... like whether or not they're talking about this in a sort of sci-fi way or whether this is all you know, the way it's presented to the, the little robot guys. I mean, it doesn't really make sense that you would have a corporation that would make the little cyborg guys and give them all this free will. Yeah. And you like, know, like, against their orders or even committing suicide. And so it's kind of like, why would you build workers like that? It doesn't make sense. It's like, definitely a lot of it. It's like the whole point of this is to, like, be their entertainment. 
So from that perspective, does it? They don't care if the humans are real or not. It doesn't matter to them. Yeah. So they don't need oh, to mean, reveal I it guess, to us. I guess they kind of think that the humans aren't really in any danger because the humans stay on the the decadence fortress. Yeah. You were kind of thinking of them as you know you're at like a safari park or something, and you're thinking, well, you know the the dangerous animals aren't going to hurt the humans because they're inside this fortress. And as long as we don't try and make them come out and fight with us, they'll be safe. Yeah. So as long it's as kind of, yeah, part of the experience and thing to people and, you know, it could be something like that. As long as nothing goes wrong, you're right. The humans are perfectly safe where they are. Unless they want to go outside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or if something goes wrong and then they fall and have to be rescued. Then you get them involved in a cool battle where they're overwhelmed. Yeah, but I guess maybe that's part of the fun. If you're, if you're the avatar, you can be there as a hero to to help those people, and you know, it's yeah. exciting. I guess. Yeah, it's like. You... But I think that they do think of them as real living people. It's just kind of, they don't really think of them as being in the same situation as the players are. They're not actually fighting. Yeah. Well, they're you... kind of repairing the the fortune. And I think even even if they are fighting, they're really not in any, any danger themselves. Be I remember they explained, I think, in episode two, but I forget exactly what the explanation was. But, it's like, when they're fighting, they're not in any danger unless you, like, release the safety limiters. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's going to come up again. Yeah. You know, um, the whole business with the limiters, that's, that's definitely some kind of... Chekhov's plot device that's going to come up later because we did see that it was kind of taboo for them to talk about it, but right. uh, it's going to become necessary for for them to do that at some point to save Natsumi or something in a fire, yeah. I reckon. And I get the feel see that come up. I get the feeling like uh, Kurabur or Kaburagi will be in a situation where like he needs that power to save Natsumi, so he like releases the limiters, but that ends up like, yeah. attracting a lot of attention he doesn't want. Yeah, and we've already kind of seen that that's kind of taken as an act of rebellion from his superiors. Right. So that Mikey guy got uh, disposed of for doing that. So yeah, it, what is your thoughts on like Natsumi and Kaburugi as characters, like with their relationship? I really like them actually. I mean, I liked Natsumi even before the show became as interesting as it was. I know she did seem like a pretty by the numbers kind of anime protagonist. You know, I want to go outside. My parents were killed by the monsters. Right. You know, she had that whole motivation similar to someone like Erin Yeager at the very start of Attack on Titan. But she's also got that kind of cheerful Genki girl character that I always kind of enjoy in a protagonist. She just seemed likable. And I kind of found it funny that there was that kind of mean girl character that picked on her right. in the first episode. And she was really, really proud that she was going to get to be a butcher. It just seemed really weird. But uh, I really like her. Yeah. And Karagi, uh, what is Kabaragi? I'm getting, I'm getting mixed up with the name of a place from ReZero. Sorry. Oh, yeah. The wrong show. I'm uh, fine. He, he seems to me like, like uh, he started off kind of, okay, he's just this stoic guy, doesn't want to get too close to the character. You know, I thought over time he's going to become her mentor. He's going to become a nicer character and all of this and so for for him as a character it really did change things to see that that's not really him that's just his avatar in this game world yeah that's the act he has to and put on yeah or or really more that he doesn't want to become friends with these humans because he knows they're real but he also is tasked with, you know, killing the ones that are seen to be bugs. And, uh, you know, he'd have to lie to anybody he was friends with about his own identity and everything. So it seemed like that was the reason he was distancing himself instead of being more, you know, enthusiastic about working with Nats. I mean, in the beginning, yeah. at first he just seemed like a lumpy guy, but it made sense, you know. Yeah, and I th I agree with you about Natsumi. She's kind of basic as her characters go, but like I love her personality, her desire to like see yeah. more of the world, get get her the answers, get the life she wants. So it's standard, but for a character like that, it works wonderfully. Yeah, I, th I think she's kind of cute and cheerful, and she's got that sort of optimism where you know, 
you can do something that seems a bit cheesy, like a kind of training montage or whatever with her, and it's still entertaining. Right. You know? Especially yeah. in the context of this kind of show where the pace is so fast that something like a training montage is completely necessary. Yeah. But when you're sort of seeing it, and you know that Cabaragi knows that it's really a tutorial from a game, and, mm-hmm. and she's sort of treating it like it's this, you know, kung fu training montage or something, it's... It's really nice. She, she's just a good character to, to do something like that with. It's again, it's great. We have so two or two completely different characters, two completely different perspectives. And that makes this show a lot fuller than it would be otherwise. Yeah, definitely. I think there's, you know, there's room for there to be some more interesting characters in it. We haven't really seen much of anybody else yet. Yeah. Um, you know, there was the other, the other, gears or whatever they're called the 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 little robot guys there were a few of them in the first episode in the second episode sorry that that were taken out so we won't get to know them anymore but um with regards to the humans and that there hasn't been anybody who's been really sort of spotlighted as likely to become a major character yet so yeah so we just have the two yeah now we've spent you know, a decent amount of time with Natsumi and Kabaragi and that little weird mascot thing. Oh, that, yeah. That, the... When I first saw that guy, Piper, yeah, I was like, oh, what the hell's that? But I was trying to actually find him cute by the end of episode three. <laughs> yeah, I kind of want one as a pet. Yeah. I mean, at first I was like, oh, that's horrible. <laughs> Why did they draw that? You know? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I by feel the like... end of episode three, I was like, no, they have to go and save him. Yeah, I feel like he's going to be more important than he appears to, or at least that's just the feeling I get. I thought, like, in the third episode, they kind of made it look like he was going to be really important by the way that Kabaragi, when he escapes, he's all, like, calling up that guy. He's like, oh, the thing has gone missing. I have to go and retrieve it. And you're like, oh, it's got some kind of important chip in him or something. And it's like, no, it's just his pet. He, they show the backstory of him scraping him off of a off yeah. the side of the, the fortress. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, just his little little friend. Yeah, he cares about his pet. <laughs> yeah. He seems very friendly too. Yeah. And so I guess yeah. the, I was gonna say the other thing, like the really interesting part of the show is like after everything's revealed and we see that it is not fully real or like that definitely like changed the way I saw the entire show and just like what I was expecting, even though now I kinda don't know where it can go. Yeah, I think um, trying to predict where it's going to go at the pace that it's moving as well. Right. It it feels like if there's going to be a big overarching story, it's probably going to kick in in like the next episode. This isn't, you know, they haven't dragged anything out for even a second. It's very densely packed. Any questions you have or any setup, it seems to try and deliver on immediately, which is really strange. I've not seen that done in in an anime for a long time. It's also weird that this is only going to be a 12 episode anime. So it has to wrap up the entire story in those 12 episodes. Do you know what the source material was? It's an an anime original. Yeah. It's an anime original. Ah, so nobody knows. Yeah. Which is kind of fun since like, there's not like manga you just like give us hints or anything. Yeah. But it's definitely paying off everything that it sets up very quickly. So I think, you know, and if something really strange happens, like they kind of darling in the Franks it, and the second half of it is just bewildering. Right. I think it's going to try and be interesting set pieces with the rest of the season. I can see maybe some form of rebellion against the. Against like the, the cyborg the thing? Or something on that scale, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, no. I think maybe Cabaret doesn't want to be killing the human bugs, clearly, because right. he saved Natsumi, the little pipe guy. So. You know, he was kind of not taking his oxione or whatever it was, thinking about basically letting himself die at the start. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, he's clearly not with the corporation. He's one of the highest ranking players. I mean, I'm not sure. Is it supposed to be their job once they're like high ranking? Because yeah, I don't know. Or it is... seemed at first like it was like a video game. And it does seem to be like a video game, but it's like, is. Are they in a society where they don't need to do jobs so like their life becomes their game? Yeah, but if they were, then why would you even have, 
you know, the cyborg guys that seem to have been created to work for the corporation. Yeah. So it's like actually like part of, part of what they're doing is that they have to harvest that that green stuff from the monsters. Yeah, that that could be. Maybe it. they just make it feel like. A huh. Yeah, it's really strange. Normally, you'd sort of think, well, there'll be there'll be a chance to read the the light novel or the manga or something and find out these details. But with an anime original, we're really going into it blind, and it's kind of yeah. Even though they are presenting us with a lot of stuff, it's like there's still a lot of mysteries, isn't there? Yeah, there is. And we're like, if it's twelve episodes, we're like a fourth of the way through it. So I yeah. don't, I don't feel like they can expand the story that much. So that might be why they keep the cast of characters pretty small. That's a good point. Yeah, I hadn't realized it was only going to be twelve episodes ever, kind of thing. Yeah, you know, well, they're so used to seasonal anime that you sort of think it will be twelve episodes with a cliffhanger, and then you yeah. know. <laughs> I could see them maybe, uh, yeah, maybe something like that. Yeah. I could see them maybe doing it, but it feels like a type of show that they just like want to make a one and done thing. Yeah, yeah, which I mean it would be interesting. I I kind of prefer that actually with the pace that it has. You know, if you keep going at that sort of pace, you're going to run out of things to do with the characters I would have thought. But then if it slowed down, it would probably end up being a bit more generic because i suppose once you've had that big reveal and you know the way the world is becomes the new status quo for the rest of the story yeah if that's going to be you know 50 episodes it kind of loses its edge yeah it I just feel becomes like... another yeah this is gonna have the same impact all the way through the season really so i feel like there might be there'll probably be like a couple more twists like a few more episodes in to like keep it interesting yeah. Or just like when Natsumi learns the truth about what's going on, like how will she react? Where will that lead the thing? Yeah. I mean, like I was saying at the beginning of this recording, if you go back and watch the very first scene, you know, her father had actually discovered one of the the little cyborg guys. Ah. You know, when they were, when they were sifting through the ruins. Like I said, that, that scene seemed so by the numbers for a sci-fi show that just didn't really pay attention to it. Yeah, I actually forgot about and, that. He's, um, yeah, he's uncovered one of their actual cyborgy bodies. Okay. You know, it just looks like a metal ruin. You don't really think about it. So in some way, those cyborg creatures not in their avatar form have been on that land. Yeah. And his father was among people who were suspicious about something strange about the world and were looking for it. Okay. So it would kind of with that kind of setup for her to try and figure out what it was her dad was trying to do yeah, and, maybe, and and maybe that's the reason they made his dad get killed yeah so it could be like she, he's now wants uh, revenge against all the cyborgs and could that include Kaburagi yeah or maybe he would be switching sides to help her because he too seems to have problems with the way things are run right you know where he doesn't really want to be working for that mob boss looking guy who's all like you got to kill the bugs and he doesn't want to kill the bugs so, well it's interesting you know, he, so think, far he's like been in the situation he has not been killing the bugs himself he's just been like collecting their chips which whatever that means yeah but they did look like they died when he did that yeah or, or it looks like they were like shot and they were killed by something else and he removed the chip to like take that back but they think that the chip tracks them yeah so I don't... Then, it says a bug isn't in the chip. It's just like they're people who can disrupt the system in some way. Yeah. And that should have been one as well, but her chip malfunctioned when she nearly died or something. Right. When she lost her mom. So they thought that she was dead, which is why she's basically avoided detection up until now. Yeah. yeah but that's... also the pipe is also supposedly a bug. So, do the monsters all have that stuff tracking them as well? Yeah. Gadol or whatever they're called. They, do they also have chips in them that the corporation are tracking? Yeah, that... Or are they, like, harvested for the, for the oxyone or whatever it's called? Yeah, are they, they, are they just, like, farm animals they're... or something? Yeah. I, 
actually have way more questions about this anime than I realized. <laughs> yeah, that's why it's fun talking about it because you guys, oh, this kind of makes sense. And you start asking questions. You guys, wait, I have no idea uh, about any of this. Yeah. And something else I'm wondering is, like, what is going on with the Cyborg Society as a whole? Because, like, they have their entertainment facility, but is that just entertainment? Is there something more that they're doing for that? Is there someone else behind the, str- or behind the scenes uh, controlling everything? Yeah, and what do they do the rest of the time? Yeah. You know? Because um, it does seem like Kaburagi and the other guys that we saw earlier and who were killed they were all uh, high-ranking players, and it seemed like their life just revolved around being required to play this game. Yeah, so are they like esports and, players yeah. or something where that's their yeah, job? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. It's like maybe that's what being a high-ranker means, and you know they get to do that full-time, whereas everybody else sort of has normal, whatever would be normal in their society kind of jobs and yeah. you know, follow it for entertainment. It's definitely interesting. <laughs> pretty seriously having those guys sending them in with you know to recover the bugs and all that it does seem to be being taken more seriously than just you know this is just like a casino or something you know that you can go to right. spend your free time yeah and it's interesting too the cyborgs like when their announcements they make a comment at the end saying like have a profitable day yeah which that says something about their society though i don't quite know what yet yeah it's like if their role is to collect the the oxyon whatever which the cyborgs seem to run off of right they did describe that as a multi-purpose fuel so i guess the cyborgs will run off of that but they must be for a corporation to be a thing they must be doing more than just getting the fuel that perpetuates their own existence you know they must be creating something or selling something and who to? I mean, what's the rest of the Earth like? Yeah, like that means that their goal is to like make money for someone or the equivalent to money. Or to, you know, have the biggest share of ownership of the market of something. But yeah. who are the customers? Well, you know, is the rest of the Earth still basically normal and they're selling things to them? Or Yeah, because he said that, you know, in the... Planet, when they're describing the world, they're saying like like humanity had basically been wiped out. The big corporations took control, which is what they're being told. But what if that's not entirely true? And we yeah. we also heard like it's the corporations took control, and the corporations would therefore be the ones to set up the society. And corporations are all about profits. So is that like what is driving them somehow? Still, the corporation that founded them. Yeah, I mean, the corporation thing must be important. It doesn't seem like, you know, it would have been easy to just go, oh, these are aliens and this is their form of entertainment, you know, like they do with things like Gantz. Yeah, but well, there's something case, more here. Kind of, the corporate thing seems to be a big theme, doesn't it? And so finding out what their actual role is and who their customers or shareholders or whatever's really driving them, who those are, are they on the rest of the earth or are they on another planet or does everybody of importance now live on these big spacecraft and they're all cyborgs we we don't really know there, but, again as you said there's a lot we don't know yeah um, yeah i'm kind of out of things to talk about other than seeing like i don't know anything yeah that's I was yeah, I was thinking we would go into this kind of conversation and just be like, yeah, people can watch this show. It's really weird. It's got a big twist and and then it's, you know, it's got some good fight scenes. It's got yeah. interesting characters. There's a lot of reasons to watch it. But it, when you start getting into actually what's still going to be revealed, there's actually still a lot. Yeah, I think those will be, to get into stuff. I think this will be very interesting to take a look at when it's all over too. Yeah. We should do another video over. Oh, yeah, definitely. That would be fun. It's interesting. I was making my own, like, first impressions video to try and tell people to watch it. But I was trying to do so in a way that did not spoil anything. So I was, like, saying, yeah, the character's good. Story's interesting. Some twists. And then I realized, I was like, it's only four minutes long. What else can I say, though? Yeah, it's really hard to talk about. It's like I was going to do the same. I was I was planning to do a sort of first impressions video 
Um, I did one about God of High School. Okay. And it was really hard to do the same thing. It's like God of High School, you can talk about it without spoiling anything and still get the gist of why you should watch it. Yeah. This, it's it, like, if I don't tell you, then I can't tell you why you should watch it. You know, it just sounds like another good action show that, you know, has a has a nice protagonist and you're just like, like, no, I've how, got to, I've got to how do you convey that's not a cliche show when it looks really cliche and that's you can't describe it as not cliche without spoiling something yeah i think the the best way to encourage anyone to watch it though since it seemed to work on both of us was just tell them it's weird okay. just watch it because it's weird <laughs> okay i'll do that or i'll send them weird screenshots out of context yeah send them pictures of the weird chibi robots and yeah. It's that shift in art style as well when you go from the from the, the world where Tap is now over there, yeah. me and that and all that live to the to the spaceship and this shift in art style to these little cutesy chibi guys. It's like <gasps> Am I watching the same show or Yeah, and like the initial style, style is really well. Yeah, it does. Like the animation for the show is great in all of its different yeah. styles. And the OP, which, of course, they couldn't show you in the first episode because it would have really baffled you. Yeah. You know, the OP where they've got those like, little game-like bits of Natsumi swimming and all this. It's like, yeah. Yeah. They, that's cool. I like it how they... no sense in the first episode. I like how they take advantage of the fact you typically don't see the OP in the first episode of a normal show, so they just take advantage yeah. of that here. Yeah. Or it's like in... Uh, it's like in Reserve with a new season, how they don't show the opening until the end of the second episode when they introduce that one character. Yeah, and then they've like never shown the ending with yeah. three episodes and they still haven't seen the ending. Reserve is great. The opening should... has actually never been shown at the start of an episode either. So yeah, it hasn't like, been yet. In three episodes, we've had the OP once, no ending, and the OP was shown at the end. Exactly. It's they, like, I like when they do interesting stuff with the openings and endings, but uh, in this in this show, Decadence, they just couldn't have shown that. It would have it would have been so bewildering. Right. I can only imagine what people think the show is if they go and watch the opening for it. Yeah, probably some kind of psychedelic chibi nightmare. I don't know. It's a good description of the show. Psychedelic chibi nightmare. <laughs> are there any other like overall thoughts you have on the show so far i really think I've, I've said everything that i know or think about it because we have only had three episodes and i i'm really happy that it's airing this season i i was expecting you know to have re-zero and basically you know, a few few little weird shows to yeah. talk about, but nothing like this that was going to be, I don't know what's happening, nobody knows what's happening, there's no source material we can reflect on, this is just watch it every week and find out where it's going. Yeah, this season, they're getting really this season I was expecting like Reezer to be the big show and maybe a couple others that aren't as interesting, just like watch from time to time. This one's yeah, definitely the, up there. Yeah, I mean, I was sort of thinking I'll watch Rezero, go to high school, give that a look, you know, uh, but this is like really a pleasant surprise. It's not one of those that you just watch for something to watch. It's it's something I'm now looking forward to every week. Yeah, you know, to see where they're going to go with it. Yeah, I also don't know if I'm going to watch it weekly or just wait wait for it to end so I can not have evil cliffhangers. Mm. At least they do pay off the cliffhangers quite quickly. But that's uh, true. Yeah. It, it might be a nice show to, to marathon if you aren't already halfway through it. You yeah. know, uh, anybody listening to this just considering watching it, it probably would be a good thing to, to watch the whole 12 episodes in one session if you... That would be fun. You know, have the kind of to do that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, well, I guess that's all of our thoughts on the episode. Thank you for everyone who checked out this video. Uh, go make sure you check out Natalie's channel, which will be linked below, unless I forget. If so, please remind me. And yeah, go check out her ReZero content and the other videos she does, and check out more videos on my channel. I have ReZero, and I don't know what else. Whatever else sounds like fun at the time, basically. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, thank you for joining me for this.